Good evening, folks. It's your resident ooky spooky girly Alexa back today to change things up a little. While I usually enjoy chit chatting with y'all about demonic entities, biblical terrors, UFOs, assorted cryptids, and more, I thought it would be fun to switch things up today and talk about some evil folks that I run the risk of actually encountering in my lifetime. Welcome to the top five evil prisoners that are currently on the loose. In fifth place, we have the world record holder for longest prisoner on the run. In November of 1955, 22-year-old John Patrick Hannon was sentenced to 21 months in Vern Prison, which is located on the Isle of Portland, for stealing a car and a to police officers. He broke out from the facility with fellow inmate Gwyneth Thomas after only 30 days by using a knotted bedsheet to climb over the wall. Guess it's not just a myth. After escaping, the duo burgled a nearby gas station and stole overcoats, beer, and cigarettes. You know, priorities. I guess the jackets would help with like crafting a disguise, but I think I would have tried to take, I don't know, some food so I could stay undetected longer. But hey, that's just me. The beer and cigarettes, I guess I can chalk up to dudes being dudes in the 50s. And maybe this particular store didn't have a large supply of anything else. While John is still on the run, Gwyneth, also 22 years old, was found only 16 hours after this daring escape, having been spotted by a truck driver. Now, a hunt for John was held, with the police pulling out all the tools in their arsenal, from police dogs, to roadblocks, but he could not be found. A police description at the time said John was five foot seven inches tall, with brown hair, blue eyes, and a proportionate build. Now he's about 68 years old, and he's believed to be living somewhere in Ireland. In 1998, Dorset police appealed directly to John to give himself up, writing in a police force newsletter, if you read this, Mr. Hannon, please write in. We'd love to hear from you. And while that sounds fun and all, if caught, John would face a charge of escaping from lawful custody and have to finish the remainder of his sentence. It would then be up to the Home Secretary to decide whether he should be pardoned. So if you're out there listening, whatever you're up to, it's obviously working, and I'd love some tips on how to stay off the grid more myself. In fourth place, we have the only New York State prison escapee who's never been found. Victor Figueroa was supposed to be headed to the mess hall at 10 a.m. on February 6th of 1997, which, funny enough, happens to be the year I was born. Instead of his planned destination, he simply walked away from Mariah Shock Incarceration Facility in Mineville, or Minville. I couldn't really find an exact sounding, so you folks let me know if I got this right or wrong. In the days that followed, upstate newspapers ran stories about the disappearance, and correction officers, troopers, and police dogs scoured the area around the minimum security men's prison. The searchers followed footprints that led from the facility to the only entrance of a shuttered iron mine across Fisher Hill Road, and that's where the trail ended. State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision spokesman Thomas Maley said in an email that it ultimately was determined, based on the evidence, that Victor had most likely fallen into one of the abandoned mine shafts and the risk to the well being of the search crews was too great to continue. Here's where the spooky part comes in because, well, we can't have a list without it. Victor's body was still never recovered, so it's believed that he's very much currently on the run. His escape led the agency to review its security procedures ahead of court appearances by inmates. He had snuck out of the prison shortly after being issued street clothes for an upcoming meeting with a judge. Nowadays, inmates at the shock facility who are given civilian clothes remain under watch by a prison guard until they're transferred to court custody, which, you know, makes sense. For folks like myself who are unaware of what a shock facility is, since I've mentioned it, you know, a couple of times, it's a six-month boot camp where young offenders are put through a military-style routine of exercise, work, education, treatment, and life skills counseling. Successful completion of the program can significantly shorten an inmate's sentence. Victor was serving a one to four year sentence for felony attempted possession and escaped from the facility just three months into his sentence. The 21 year old had been arrested the previous summer by Albany County Sheriff's investigators on an Adirondack Trailways bus leaving Albany for Utica. Investigators had boarded the bus at around 3.40 in the morning on August 1st of 1996 in search of people carrying and Victor was busted with 60 packets of heroin. We don't know much about his personal life, with the five foot five tall man having no tattoos, a seventh grade education, and no employment at the time of his arrest. In third place, we have Glenn Stark Chambers. Before his time in prison, 23-year-old Glenn was living with his 22-year-old girlfriend, waitress Connie Weeks in Sarasota, Florida. The relationship seems to have not been ideal. In January of 1975, a policeman intervened to prevent Glenn from physically attacking Connie on the street during an argument, when he already had her hair in his fist. The policeman, who was off duty at the time, arrested Glenn on the spot and called for backup to bring him to jail. But 
Connie bailed him out later that day. That same night, Glenn showed up at the Sarasota Memorial Hospital, carrying Connie in his arms, claiming she'd slept in the shower. It was a stupid lie, and the doctors and nurses who tended to Connie phoned to the police. And rightfully so. She passed away in the hospital later that week, and a judge sentenced Glenn to the electric chair. The young man attempted to escape prison almost immediately, attacking a guard with two accomplices and managing to climb out a window. This first attempt didn't get very far, with all three men being caught, and a Florida judge added five years to Glenn's life term. By 1990, Glenn seemed to be turning over a new leaf, with his behavior over those 15 years being described as exemplary, and prison authorities gave him permission to work in a furniture construction shop, designed to give inmates vocational training training and a sense of purpose. But to the shock and surprise of no one, Glenn had a secret plan. On February 21st of 1990, he slipped into one of the boxes of furniture that was set to be shipped off the premises to a warehouse. No one noticed the extra weight as they loaded the crate into a truck, nor did they notice, you know, during the entire drive to Daytona Beach, anything shifting around in the back of the truck. No footsteps, no clunking lids, no sound of the back panel sliding open or dropping shut. But upon arrival, one open crate contained a discarded prisoner's uniform, and the uh, Polk Correctional Institute was missing a man. No one has yet to hear from him again, and he's been allegedly spotted in Florida and Alabama, where his family happens to live, but never officially found. In second place, we have Glenn Stewart Godwin. Glenn was born on June 26th of 1958 in Miami, Florida, but grew up in Palm Springs after his family moved to California in the 1960s. He attended Palm Springs High School, where he was remembered as a star student, playing trumpet in the school brass band, graduating in 1975. In 1980, while working as a self-employed tool salesman, a mechanic, and a construction worker, Glenn and his roommate, Frank Soto Jr., planned to rob a jeweler and pilot, Kim Robert Lavalley, who was once a friend of theirs. Great company. Glenn and Frank lured Kim back to their place, where they took his life, and uh, those details are too much for me to describe. After the death, the duo loaded the body into a truck and set off for the desert, with Glenn originally trying to blow up the evidence by using homemade explosives strapped to the body. The explosion was apparently intended to disguise the cause of death? Okay, I might be delirious with exhaustion right now, but that doesn't exactly sound like a brilliant plan to me. Eventually, residents of the Eagle Mountain area found the blown up pickup Glenn and Frank had ditched, along with what was left of Kim. Police were able to identify the body and charged Glenn with uh, first degree death, with a sentence of 26 years to life in prison in 1983. Yeah, totally shocked there. In 1987, Glenn attempted to escape during his incarceration at Dual Vocational Institute in California, and he was moved to Folsom State Prison, a maximum security prison. Authorities believe his wife, Shelley Rose Godwin, and his former cellmate in Dual, Lorenz Karlick, helped to plan his next escape, which was successful, and the reason I'm chatting about him here today. On June 5th of 1987, he cut a hole through wire fence using a hacksaw and other tools that had been smuggled in for him and escaped into a storm drain that emptied into the American River. It's believed that Glenn dropped through a manhole and crawled 750 feet through the pitch black drain until he reached a raft that an accomplice had left for him and was guided away by following painted arrows on rocks that directed him where to go. In June of 1987, Lorenz was arrested in Hesperia, California, and convicted for aiding Glenn's escape. He had previously been arrested after a foot chase with deputies from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. He was convicted in January 2002 of eight charges related to that pursuit, and in January of 1988, Shelley Godwin was classified as a federal fugitive for her role in her husband's escape, and was captured by the FBI in Dallas, Texas on February 7th of 1990. Now, unlike some of the other folks on this list, we actually have an idea of where Glenn might be. Originally fleeing to Mexico, he unsuccessfully participated in the illegal trade before being arrested in Puerto Vallarta and convicted for trafficking in Guadalajara, Mexico, sentenced to seven years and six months to Puente Grande prison in 1991. While American authorities were working on Glenn's extradition proceedings, he allegedly ended the life of a member of a Mexican cartel in prison. The new death allegation delayed his extradition, which gave Glenn more time to execute another escape, which occurred in September of 1991. Jeez, was he a student of Houdini or something? Glenn is currently believed to be somewhere in Latin America, having possibly used aliases such as Dennis Harold McWilliams, 
Nigel Lopez, and Miguel Carrera. He is considered to be armed and extremely dangerous and an, you know, obvious flight risk. The FBI is offering a reward of up to $20,000 for information leading to his capture, if anyone out there feels like, you know, trying to hunt him down. And finally, in first place, we have Vasilis Pereocostas. He grew up in a small village in the mountains in central Greece, and is believed to have planned the kidnapping of Giorgos Milonas, a Greek industrialist, as the ransom paid was traced back to uh, our man here. In 2000, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison for the 1995 kidnapping of Alexander Hetoglu, the CEO of Hetoglu Bros, I'm so sorry, which he orchestrated with his brother Nikos, who is currently serving out the rest of his own sentence under house arrest due to his poor health. His first attempt to escape took place on Sunday, June 4th of 2006, when two accomplices hired a trip on a sightseeing helicopter from Agios Cosmos, a coastal suburb of Athens, and hijacked the helicopter, forcing the pilot to fly to the prison. When the helicopter arrived, guards believed the helicopter was a visit from prison inspectors, so the helicopter was able to fly the prisoners out to a cemetery nearby where they transferred to motorcycles and fled from there. Vasilis was recaptured two years later on August 2nd, 2008 in Thessaloniki. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave y'all without the details of the better escape. On Sunday, February 22nd, 2009, Vasilis again escaped from Athens' Korydalos prison by helicopter. I'm sensing a theme here, but hey, if it works. It works. He and his cellmate, Alket Ruzai, climbed a rope ladder thrown to them by a female passenger in the helicopter as it flew over the prison courtyard. Police said an elderly couple found the helicopter abandoned in the Athenian suburb of Kapantriti near a highway north of Athens with its fuel tank leaking and the pilot left behind, bound and gagged with a hood over his head. He told the police the helicopter was chartered by a couple who claimed they wanted to go from the town of Aitia in central Greece to Athens. The couple had chartered the helicopter a number of times in previous weeks, with the woman posing as a businesswoman. According to the pilot, who claimed to have been forced into taking part in the escape, Vasilis and Alket were delivered to a getaway car, and that's all he knew. The government of Greece faced intense criticism after his second escape from this same facility, and the government responded by firing three justice ministry officials and arresting three prison guards. Talk about majorly messing up on the job. I'm glad that if I mess up in my line of work, that usually just means my tongue didn't want to work properly and it's easily fixed by uh, talking more. Vasilis is still at large with a 1 million euro bounty for information leading to his arrest. And while this is all impressive, something that stood out to me while doing my research is that Vasilis wrote an autobiography entitled A Normal Life and it was published in November of 2021 by Freedom Press. While the irony of the publishing company name makes me chuckle, it's fascinating that he's been able to publish a book without being being recaptured. And now that I feel like rewatching The Shawshank Redemption, that's the end of our list. What do you folks out there think? Is there a chance any of the guys I've mentioned will ever be captured again? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos.